people and get them over to one side, just one on one, you and them, and, and a lot of times they'll tell more than they would. They'll open themselves up more than they would being around a, another a group of people. So you need to move them away and, and do a conversation with them off to the side. Here though, pack a suitcase and it'll leave. I mean, he was a highly respected man, but when you go back with employment, whatever you've done, he had done very little. He just lived off other people, but he knew how to go at it. Now, possibly somebody could have got tired. You his way, and ended it for him. I don't know. I, I can't tell you what to do. Just listen to these people talk. And sooner or later, what they said one day don't match up with what they said the day before. Now, well, uh, think about it. This is what we came up with. Mr. Howard, a family man in Marble Sosom, killed a man in Maryland in 1989. At his trial, the community filled the courtroom for moral support. And he was found not guilty. It's not linked, but street killings was up in that area over the next four years. And most all of them were blamed on drugs. What it is, Mr. Williams is the man in charge of this cold case investigation. And you men have got to handle situations on the streets. You've got to control the area. You've got to try to stop these bank robbers, fights, rapes, and whatever. You've got to do what needs to be done to protect this area. You've got to put that first. But if you get any information, any information at all, we will uh, talk about it this morning uh, coffee session before you go on the streets. You know, these foreigners come over here and get their citizenship. And uh, they start these gangs. And uh, especially the Chinese, they got some reference because they do this karate, do this karate stuff. And, and it looks important to these people. And they, and they get into the gangs with them because they like that karate look. And uh, they feel like, you know, if they learn that, they're, you know, they're, It'll be the greatest, so uh, that entices them to join the karate stuff. And they come in and start these little groups, and that's not really good. And I think that has a big impression on the younger people, too. Oh, yeah, that's what the younger people like at karate stuff. I know we got gangs here, but still, uh, that type of culture, it does have a lot of influence on younger people. Yeah, they like it karate stuff. That's what draws them in. And they're just like I'm saying, I ran into some of it, and I ended up in jail on account. Mm, yeah. We just brought this gentleman in, didn't we? Could be facing a first-degree murder charge. Oh, I could be facing a first-degree murder charge, but I don't think so. I'm an investigator in the line of duty, and I think somebody set me up. I think this lead to Chinatown, it was to trap me. I don't think it's got anything to do with this missing person's case. I don't think so.
Your assailant is in the hospital now. We don't know his condition. I feel that the corruption could be in this department. Maybe that's why this case uh, went and gone long enough. Yet I don't think so. But give me a chance to rule this department out. And if they end the law, we can uh, investigate in other areas. Let me uh, rule this department out first. Well, me and I, we got work to do, so. I'll get back way here before we start to work tomorrow. Have a good day. I made a career out of the military. And then after I retired, well, I met this lady and we got married. And, well, we had some happy years together. And then when she passed on, I just haven't been close with Bob with anybody. But uh, I just tried to get away from her all going to these clubs and socializing with uh, women. Mm. Not that I won't get close to yeah. And I know that uh, when we worked on this Will Simmons case, I met some women there that I'd kind of like to see again. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess uh, the club's still open, is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the band. And it was a good band, good group. Well, it hadn't been that long since uh, I was here last time, so mm -hmm. I'm glad they got the same band. Well, uh, Officer Scott, I want to thank you personally for offering to work with me on this case. Well, I'm just thinking about the community. The uh, reason they gave me this badge was, this gold detective's badge was to uh, better the community, but... I believe in doing whatever we got to do 
to uh, solve this case. I realize it's been turned over to cold case files. If it weren't, I don't guess I'd be on it. Well, uh, Chuck, how you like out here in North Carolina? Beautiful country. Beautiful country. In fact, I'm pretty much fed up up the north. Well, I heard they kicked you out of Garden City. You know, you got a little rough with some of these people up our point of here. I believe I did. At least I tried in one case. Yeah, well, I tell you, this is a small town and a small sheriff's department, and uh, we need men like you. <laughs> I mean, what I'm saying is, I know the case, like, uh, you know, you try to get the information out of this killer, and they turn him loose, and he robbed this bank and killed him again. Uh, I don't know what's right. I think you've done a good job myself, and uh, the citizens are a whole lot safer with you than uh, without you. Well, the creed that we take as a law enforcement order, officer. We try our best. Sometimes it's not the best in the image of, shall I say, the society that we have today. But uh, as law enforcement officers, we try, like I say, we just try our best. Well, speaking about the images, uh, your callers, uh, on the coach, a little out of line, so uh, let me fix this here for you. We're going to keep that image. You know, as law enforcement people, I guess we've got to set a good example for the citizens. Yeah. Well, I feel it's necessary to spend more tax money for proper training and equipment because as you know a schooled officer and a well-trained officer is a much better officer i agree that a school officer is the better officer yet officer denbo he believes in on the job training He'll work with a man that's interested in being in law. He'll send him in the bar to ask questions. And with no uh, police background or any background as a law enforcement officer, uh, it's safer. And uh, if they expect a uh, law enforcement officer working undercover, well, you just don't get the answers. What we got is nothing. What we got is all in Officer Denbo's mind. It's one thing to live in a fantasy world and have conspiracy theories, but it's another thing. We've got real crimes and real investigations, and this is reality. We've got to get busy. We don't have time for fantasy. Officer Denbo works with the suspects the same way that I work with prisoners in Vietnam. Now what he'll do, before interrogation, he'll have them taken to the hospital for x-rays. Then he'll put them through interrogation, make them think he's going to break their arms. Then he'll take them back to the hospital to prove there's been no 